Alright, I'm going to be taking on Namtar's Lair, going for the Scrooge Badge, which requires us to complete the boss parade. Normally, Scrooge Badge, I don't really find all that interesting, because it's pretty much the same for all the dungeons. You do the dungeon normally, and then you fight the 12 standard bosses afterward. There are exceptions, like uh, Dem in Demonic Library it's pretty interesting because you need a way to get back out from the Avatar's Chamber. But for the most part, it ends up being pretty much the same everywhere. Namtar's Lair is a major exception. In Namtar's Lair, you only go to the boss parade after you carry Namtar through the underworld. And that is a trip that has some huge penalties. As you descend through the underworld, you lose like 30 max HP, you lose 15 base damage, you lose 6 max mana, you lose all your resistances, you get 10 Corrosion and 10 Weakness. And normally that's not a problem because you're just fighting progressively weaker forms of Namtar, each with, with plenty of darkness along the way. But if you're doing Scrooge, then you then have to go through a parade of 12 bosses afterward, and you still don't have access to your surface resources. Now, the game does have a little mercy on you. It does give you Namtar's Ward to take the place of that Namtar's corpse was holding in your inventory. And it also lets your current altar go downstairs with you. But only your current altar, like you can't go to find other gods or whatever during this. And that's a pretty significant penalty. So, I'm using an Avatar's Codex build here for two reasons. First, is because I always use an Avatar's Codex build. That's just my default answer to everything. But the second reason is that thinking about it, the penalties from the Underworld, they hurt. They apply to your health, they apply to your physical damage, and they apply to your mana, which is kind of sort of like magic health. But they don't apply to your magical damage. Your fireballs still hit just as hard as they ever did. So because of that, I figure a magic build is going to be penalized about half as much as a physical build by descending through the underworld, so this is probably going to be a pretty good approach here. So that's what I'm going for. And I'm starting Mystera because going down to 5 mana for fireball is just so good. I haven't been commenting too much on what's going on so far, it's been a fairly normal exploration phase, wandering around, getting XP and stuff, casting spells just to make Mystera happy. I did find a Lemmy Sea earlier, and I was very happy that when I used it I saw Earth Mother. And because Earth Mother is basically what I was scumming for. So Boss Parade, I only started doing after I'd done Naga City Curious, so a lot of the lessons from Naga City Curious I sort of take with me into Boss Parade. And one of them is how to use gods to deal with like all these bosses as a pure caster, is there's two gods that you really want, Mystera and Earth Mother. Earth Mother makes enemies slowed so they can't retaliate, which also means that mana burners won't do nasty things to you. And saves you a bunch of health just from slowing. And Earth Mother also gives you a bunch of mana back, which is very important in the long term. Mystera, on the other hand, lets your refreshment be larger, and she can remove magic resist from enemies, which, especially if we're dealing with the Iron Golem at 75% magic resist, is huge. And in Naga City, curious, you're kind of bouncing back and forth between the two of them as appropriate to whatever monsters are on the current wave. Here, again, the problem is that only one god can travel down with you, so you only get one god over the whole boss parade. You have to choose one that will really count. And I tried it at first with Mystera. I got a score of like 7 out of 12 boss kills, and I think I got one that went as high as 9 out of 12. But the problem with that is that even though she's really useful for getting rid of magic resist, you don't get a lot out of refreshment, because Due to traveling down into the underworld, you can't take your glyphs with you, so refreshment barely triggers. And she just doesn't give you quite enough sustain to get through everything. I thought that with Soul Orb to protect me from the retaliators, uh, mana burn, I figured that would be enough, and it just really wasn't. 
So I think Earth Mother really is important here. It does mean that the Iron Man is going to be a huge pain to deal with, but I'd rather one really difficult boss than just running out of health from all of the bosses hitting me back. So that's why I went for Earth Mother. And in addition to that, Earth Mother helps with the upstairs Namtar fights too. Unfortunate luck with this fight with the level 8 Shade. I was a bit of health short, now I'm still a bit of health short, and I would have been fine on health except I explored into another Shade while region fighting. Finally got it though, a level 8 kill at level 4 is very lucrative. And if we can kill a level 8 at level 4, a level 9 at level 5 should be super doable. If I'd explored one tile fewer, I would have been fine there. I explored too much, so a bit of inefficient region fighting. But at least none of the darkness upstairs I can take downstairs with me, so it matters a little less what resources I waste here. Obviously I still don't want to be wasteful, but... I'm punished a bit less since I'm going to lose it all when I descend anyhow. I'm trying to tunnel my way over to the Earth Mother there, and there's two reasons for that. Uh, one is I don't want to kill the level 1 spellcaster because I don't want Mystera to get mad at me. But the other is, I don't want to kill the level 1 spellcaster because they'll leave a bloodstain on the ground. Which means Earth Mother, when I ask her to turn all the bloodstains into plants, would lock me in. And uh, that's not really something I'm keen on. There's also a, a secret sub-dungeon just a little bit north of Earth Mother. Uh, probably would have been wise to tunnel into that while I was doing tunneling anyhow. I completely forgot it was there, was not paying attention to it at all. I really underuse Lemmy C, which means I'm not super, super used to actually uh, taking advantage of the information it gives me. really want that flame spoon before I convert out of Mystera. Extra damage is going to be huge in the boss fights, and it's not like I'm using my physical attacks for anything except popcorn management. I think Pizorp has outlived its usefulness. That's probably a mistake, to be honest. With Earth Mother spawning plants, Pizorf as an emergency option to uh, maneuver around them would have been nice to have. Soul Orb is a great find here because in addition to several mana burners downstairs, the first form of Namtar also has mana burn, which combined with 50% magic resist is a huge pain for our build. There is a Piercing Wand there, though, and that's not normally my highest priority item, but I'm thinking that might be an answer both to making First Form of Namtar a little better, and also to making the 75% magic resist Iron Man much more palatable. The other reason I thought Mystera for the Underworld would be nice is that you can get her down to zero piety up here, and then you'll be at 100 piety by the time you've finished off Namtar and gotten to the end of the Underworld, because you just have a ton of darkness when you're descending, so tons of free chances to cast spells and stuff.
converted over to Earth Mother before killing off some magic using popcorn. Because Earth Mother won't mind, Mystera will. People like those frozen trolls, I always forget they have magical attack. I should know by now, but... It's just one of those things I always forget. And now that I finally learned it, I end up overthinking it and being like, Oh, a green troll, I bet they have magical attack. I'm gonna pick up a Viper Ward here. It has great conversion value, so I don't mind spending gold on it. And it lets me do a little bit of regen fighting to get an extra fireball in before I level up. And of course, Plate Mail's always great defense as a Codex user. Piercing Wand is situationally good here. We can do some region fighting. Region fighting, the one drawback is since Namtar has magic resist, resistances make region fighting worse because it basically increases Namtar's regeneration rate. So that means it takes fewer tiles explored for Namtar to regain one fireball's worth of health. But I'd really rather do regen fighting while I'm upstairs, because I can take my potions downstairs with me, I can take Earth Mother's clearance ability downstairs with me, I cannot take upstairs darkness with me. So I may as well use that while I can. Although, since it looks like I'll need to spend some resources on the second phase of the Namtar fight, it's uh, quite possible that maybe I should have like been willing to use a potion or a clearance or something on the first phase, and then saved my region fighting for the second phase when region fighting would be more efficient. Something to think about. Another thing we lost by converting Pizorp is we can't get to the gold Namtar is sitting on. The first phase of Namtar drops a gold pile of 25 gold, but you can't actually access it because the second phase of Namtar is sitting on it. You can get to it with his orb or wait what, possibly even modified, but not normally. Normally you're gonna have to wait until after you've done the second phase too. Explored all the darkness there is to explore, so. I'm going to be using Earth Mother to help prevent some counterattacks as basically my health sustain here. But I'm always very cagey about spending Earth Mother piety. The thing is, the other reason I thought Mystera might be better is that if you bring Mystera down with you, you're going to be getting piety throughout the boss parade because you're going to be casting spells a bunch. But with Earth Mother, you're not going to get any piety, because you can't get any piety without I'm a Wall, which if you're converting into Earth Mother instead of starting with her, you're not guaranteed to have. But even if you do have it, you can't turn anyone to stone in the boss parade. All the monsters are bosses, they're immune. Little unlucky there, I am locked in. So I'm going to punch that plant, lose 15 piety that, again, I can't farm piety on Earth Mother. I'm never getting that back. So because the piety is extremely limited, I uh, was somewhat skeptical of bringing Earth Mother downstairs with me, but... She's just so valuable. Her candle may burn at both ends. It may not last the night, but certainly gives a lovely light. This dragon soul is what I really wanted earlier. Unfortunately, it was just too expensive. 
I could have gotten it for the second phase of Namtar if, you know, the first phase had- if, uh, I could actually have gotten to what the first phase dropped. But instead I had to wait until I could get both gold piles together. It's funny, I've got three Schadenfreude potions here. I came with one initially, I bought one in a shop, and I found one from the Exploding Signpost sub-dungeon. I'm not sure if I've ever had three Schadenfreude potions in my inventory all at once before. And I kind of wonder, is three the maximum possible? I'm trying to free up a small inventory slot. And to make room for the Witchlock Pendant, I was thinking of converting Viper Ward, but there are a couple of, uh, what do you call them? Poisonous enemies downstairs that it would be convenient to have an answer to. So instead, I drank the can of Wupez, and my plan is I'm going to just never punch anyone until we get down to the bait boss parade. And I'm just going to carry that Wupez effect all the way down until we find a boss worth using it on, probably the Meat Man. Converting the remaining glyphs since I can't take them with me. So there are three phases of Namtar left. They are not no experience. They all give XP if he's not a revived enemy, unlike Cultus or whatever. So I'm going to get 10 XP plus 2 from them being higher level than me for each of them. That's exactly 36. That's exactly enough to level up. That's a little unfortunate. I would have liked to have had one fewer XP so that I could get a level up during the boss parade. So maybe I should have killed fewer things on the surface, calculated that better in advance. But it's a bit late for that, so instead what I'm going to do is kill off some imps on the way down. That way that after I reach level 10 I'll be closer to my first prestige level up when I finally get to the boss parade. Lost all my resistances there, not using a resistance build and didn't care about it. Lots of corrosion and lots of weakness. The weakness I don't care about, the corrosion I brought a burn self specifically to deal with. If I were with, with Mystera still, I would be making sure I cast a spell with every inch of darkness here. Since I'm not, I don't care. Alright, Namtar's dead, and I still have the Can of Wupaz effect. And luckily, Meat Man's waiting for me right at the entrance, so I can use it immediately. That's just kind of convenient. I'm going to do a physical punch there. I don't normally do that, but Meat Man's like the only boss who does so little damage I can actually make a profit on it. I just gotta make sure I'm always exploring while Meat Man is burning. I don't do the correct order there, so Meat Man does get a bit of extra regeneration from my exploration while not inhibited by burning, but... Oh well. Dragon Soul coming in clutch for the kill? Gonna buy an entanglement now. Means the first attack from each enemy will do it. Will just not happen. And then that means the second attack will do a lot less because I'll built up an extra stack of Witchlock pendant in the process. At least for most enemies. Some don't use physical attacks, but. Crystal Ball would have been really nice down here, but 
That's okay, we may not have gotten that, but we got pretty much everything else on our wish list. Earth Mother was critical, that's what I was scumming for, but the other items are nice too. Soul Orb is a huge convenience. Dragon Soul, great sustain. Plate Mail, nice sustain. Witchlock Pendant, a little redundant when we already have Plate Mail and Earth Mother, but still useful. Finally picking up that Namtar's Ward. I'm realizing that I should have picked that up as part of my region fighting against Super Meat Man. That way I would have gotten a death protection from previous uh, level as well, but I don't think it mattered too much. And Namtar's Ward is really nice to have because it makes such short work of Bleedy. Earth Mother already makes short work of Bleedy due to entanglement, but if you don't have Earth Mother, Namtar's Ward is the answer to Bleedy. Using Namtar's Ward there, you might wonder why I didn't use it immediately. The answer is... It's gonna sound a bit stupid, but I have trouble reading pre the predictors when I have Namtar's Ward active. I'm always not sure. That tick near the end. Does that mean I'm going to barely avoid needing to use my death protection, or does it mean I'm going to barely have to use my death protection? It's hard to eyeball. I got some curses from Tomothy Longdoll. If I really need to, I can ask Mystera to remove them with green blood. Or not Mystera, Earth Mother, sorry. But against Medusa, I didn't mind being cursed, because she goes down in three hits, so only one hit does she actually hit counterattack me. I am running very low on darkness here, and that's something of a concern. Getting full value from my Shadenvoid potion. And I'm starting to need to use potions constantly. I figure there's little enough darkness left that I'm going to be needing to use it. I'm going to be able to use it all up in out of combat regen. There's not a lot of reason to do in combat regen. I still did a bit there. Maybe a bit inefficient. I was thinking in terms of like. The level up was going to full heal me, so it would help with getting the exact amount of stuff, but... Definitely some optimizations to be made. And speaking of optimizations to be made, I think the question of gnome versus elf is pretty interesting here. Normally, as a sorcerer, I like being a gnome. You already have a huge mana bar. But descending through the underworld does give minus six max mana, which is huge, and an elf would be able to greatly offset that. And in addition, we had to convert most of our glyphs while we were upstairs, which means we'd have done a bunch of conversions early on, so we'd have a huge mana bar most of the time. So I think it's an interesting question. Should I have gone elf instead? I didn't even think of it before I did the run. As for whether it would actually have been better... Well, it's hard to say. We don't actually have that many, like, full refills while we're down here. This isn't Naga City. We're not getting showered in, like, level ups and, uh, mana potions. There's, like, two level ups from experience during this boss, these boss battles. Maybe three, depending on how it lines up. And that's it. Most of the help mana we get back is from region fighting or from dragon soul, and not neither of those helps as an elf actually benefits from being an elf. Because they don't scale with the size of the mana bar. 
Now, in this particular run, I did end up with three Schattenfreude potions. So maybe that means that it would have been prudent to go elf, but I didn't know in advance I was going to have three Schadenfreude potions, and without being a gnome I wouldn't have tons of mana potions. And while it's true that I had to convert a bunch of glyphs upstairs, I've got a bunch of junk cluttering my inventory down here. I had both Soul Orb and Viper Ward, both of those are going to outlive their usefulness, and they're worth a ton of conversion. Namtar's Ward is worth 100 conversion points, that's available at the end. Eventually Piercing Wand will outlive its usefulness, which is right now. Namtar's Ward, I'm not leveling up again, it's outlived its usefulness. So I'm still meeting a ton of conversion thresholds down here. And if you're a gnome, last minute conversions are great. Because you can actually make use of, you know, all the stuff they give you. So they give you potions you can immediately drink. A last minute conversion as an elf? Not that spiffy. So, I don't know. I think it's a tricky decision. I don't know how much of what I'm, my arguments are actually reasonable and how much are me just, you know, retroactively justifying whatever it is I already did. But... It certainly seemed to work well enough. Finishing off Frank the Zombie with a physical attack? That definitely feels weird. We seem to be mostly out of juice, so it's time to start converting pretty much everything. We have enough uh, piety left for entanglement that the Goo Blob won't counterattack ever, so I don't need my defensive items anymore. But it's still hard emotionally to say goodbye to something as good as plate mail. We're two mana away, but there's no exploration space anywhere, and we don't have piety for one last uh, clearance. So we convert Avatar's Codex, which gives just enough conversion for one last fireball, and even a light fireball is able to finish off the final boss. So, we did it, but that was not an easy run by any means. Needing to convert Avatar's Codex at the end, not because you can't survive the counterattack, but because you just need one more mana potion, that's a sign that things have really come right down to the wire, and that was with pretty good items too. We didn't have Crystal Ball, but we had most of everything else we could have hoped for. So, I really enjoyed this. I don't usually find Curious that- or not Curious, I love Curious. I don't usually find Scrooge that exciting. But this particular Scrooge, because it cuts you off from all your resources and imposes huge debuffs on you, I thought this was really cool. And I feel like the pure caster approach might suffer less from the penalties than others, so... Yeah, I enjoyed that. That was a neat challenge and gave me a nice break from Curious BGT.